Before we proceed to the video, for more LEAD AP O plus M study material, you can contact me on my email and on my LinkedIn as usual. Hello and welcome to Location and Transportation, the first credit category for LEAD AP O plus M that may earn 15 points for your project. And surprisingly, there is only one credit without any prerequisite. If you recall the green associate, uh, the main purpose of location and transportation credit category was to find alternative ways of transportation to the project or to place or locate a project in a place that is densely populated or uh, you had multiple modes of transportation available. In case of operation and maintenance in which the building is existing, you cannot change the location of the building. So the main purpose uh, for this category and this credit is to find out any alternative transportation which will eventually reduce the environmental impact of uh, commuting to and from the building. If you have different modes of transport available, uh, the worst case scenario is that one person is traveling in a fossil fuel powered car to the project. And if somebody is coming uh, walking, uh, bicycle trip, or any other mode of transportation like bus, the per head emissions are less. So based on this, they will uh, categorize uh, how many uh, different modes of transport are being used while commuting to and from the building. So credit number one is alternative transportation, one to 15 points. Uh, alternative transportation would be any transportation other than your personal fossil fuel powered vehicle in which you are coming alone. Uh, even the carpooling in which you are coming in a fossil fuel uh, powered vehicle, but if you are sharing it with other, there will be a weighted percentage, which we'll see later on. So the requirement is to reduce pollution from automobile use for transportation to and from the building. So we got multiple options. The first one is transportation survey for one point. Uh, it's simply uh, a straightforward survey in which you have to survey the building occupants and visitors on their transportation patterns to and from the building. Now, visitors uh, would be surveyed under certain conditions. If the peak visitors in a, in a day or daily average is more than the building occupants, in that case, visitors are to be included in the survey as well, which most probably would happen in uh, retail projects. And in case of uh, normal office building, your visitors count might not exceed the building occupants. So it is subject to uh, these conditions and the survey has to be conducted once every five years. Now, three points to be uh, remembered. The school students uh, with the age of driving, they will be considered as regular occupants in terms of uh, uh, the calculations when it comes to the school adaptations, the school students would be considered. The inpatients in case of healthcare will not be surveyed and will not be considered as regular occupants and uh, the sampling should be done if the population goes more than 100 which includes in case of building occupants plus vis visitors are more than 100 then we can make sampling we'll see how we will sample so the transportation survey is the first option for one point and simple and straight uh, documentation how many building occupants and how many visitors if uh, the the project falls in the category uh, where uh, the visitors need to be surveyed that's why it's written if applicable and results showing uh, alternative transportation including absentees and vacation now the alternative transportation could be walking could be uh, bike riding could be uh, coming from by bus by tram anything uh, and the absentees only would be considered for the building occupants the regular ones not for the visitors and if there is any vacation time in which uh, the survey was conducted so for this transportation survey that we need to conduct for one point there are certain attributes like you have to list all alternative transportation modes for easy selection for the survey like walking should be there bike riding should be there and if you're coming by bus or metro whatever the possible alternative transportation modes uh, in case of uh, full-time equivalents fdes or the regular building occupants uh, information has to be collected for complete week if you have a five day week then the survey should be conducted for uh, five days and if it is a six day week then a complete information of 
six days should be collected. It is best to avoid holidays, events, or extreme weather conditions. The purpose being because it will not be a consistent survey in that case. In case of events, people would be more. And in extreme weather conditions, uh, the thing that you are trying to collect is the transportation patterns, which are going to change in case of extreme weather conditions. So we would not have uh, the, correct, uh, the correct results that you are aiming for. Uh, the survey for visitors should be separate, should not be the one that you are handing to the regular occupants. Uh, it should be different. And in case there is a possibility that a certain occupant of the building, he's coming by bus and going back by someone in the carpool, or he's coming uh, by walking and going back by bus, that means he's using more than uh, one mode of transportation. In that case, uh, we will consider or the calculations will be based on the largest distance travel. Either it's coming to the building or going back home. And we can present or we can have incentives for higher response rates. For example, you can hand over uh, the survey to the building occupants and saying if you fill that, you will have a free coffee or a donut or something like that. But you cannot provide anything related to transportation. You cannot offer saying that if you provide me with uh, the answers or uh, the survey filled form, you can have free passes to the bus. Should not be related to transportation. So any incentives are perfectly acceptable, but it should not be related to the transportation. And uh, you can have a free coffee and donut uh, in order to have more response rates. The survey nature should not be disclosed before you hand over the paper. They should be uh, they should be finding out about the nature of the survey once they have the paper or the survey in hand. It should, you cannot announce that tomorrow we are going to have uh, a survey regarding transportation patterns and stuff. No, you can say we can have a survey, but the nature of the survey would be disclosed uh, only when you hand over uh, it to the building occupant or visitor. And the response rate should be 5% minimum in order to have legitimate results or in order to have, uh, in order to be acceptable. Well, we have seen before uh, something called sample size that in case you have more than 100 people, uh, you can take a sample size, but exactly how many? So you have to come and uh, reference back to this table Starting from 100 regulars or visitors, you can take a sample size of 81. And then there is a list going on from 125, 150 up till 100,000. In case of 100,000, 398 is the number that is to be taken as a sample size. And the survey will be valid if it has a, a certain response rate. Now, usually the question asked in the exam is, if you have in between 1,000 and 2,000, for example, you've got 1,500 regulars and visitors, then what is the number of sample size that is to be used? You have to go for the next bigger number. So if you are in between 1,000 and 2,000, like 1,500, then you have to take the number uh, two, uh, which is the sample size for 2,000, which in this, uh, in this case is 333. So the exam will ask you that if you have 4,296 visitors or and regulars, then how much, uh, how many people or what should be the sample size for your survey? Uh, they will provide you with the table. And if it is more than 4,000, you have to go to the next value, which is 5,000. And the sample size for the 5,000 is 370, which would be the right answer. So this is how you can use this table in order to calculate the sample size, which is acceptable uh, for GBCI. So the option number two is alternative transportation rate. The first one was simple, just hand out some surveys to people and um, with 5% of the response rate, you'll earn one point. But in order to get benefit from this credit category up to 15 points, you have to have alternative transportation rate calculation. So first thing first, you have to fulfill option number one, have a survey in place. And alternative transport includes walking, bicycle, public transit. Uh, telecommuting is simply work from home. I think it needs no explanation after what we have gone through. Uh, carpool, when more than one person sharing the same car. Green vehicle is a vehicle that is scoring more than 45 in uh, AC, E, American Council of Energy Efficient uh, Economy. 
so this is uh, it could be a hybrid it could be a fuel cell a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle it has to be uh, accredited or uh, certified by ac triple e and scoring more than 45 it would be considered green vehicle ride share is similar to carpool but in uh, outside us and shuttles uh, will be excluded in that case so these are uh, the photos that you can see bicycle walking and other modes of transportation and driving and telecommunicate uh, telecommuting which is work from home so the atr alternative transportation rate that we have calculated has to be compared against the baseline uh, which we discussed that it's uh, occupants that are traveling alone in a conventional fossil fuel powered vehicle and it's a two trips per day coming to the building coming to the project and going back from the building so we have different formulas uh, for atr alternative transportation rate calculations if we go one by one i think we don't need to panic there are like six seven formulas but if we go one by one it's going to be easy so we have to first calculate the raw transportation rate survey response rate total uh, alternative uh, transportation etc so let's go one by one so the first formula that we'll be talking about would be alternative transportation trips calculation simply you would add all the trips that you have counted other than the baseline of the conventional vehicle somebody is driving alone so you have if somebody is walking to the project bicycling to the project why public transit human powered conveyance, uh, uh, conveyances or if uh, they did not come to the project because they're working from home etc etc uh, all the trips will be a one-on-one -on -one ratio with uh, the conventional car trips except the trips via carpool the reason being that two people are using one vehicle it is one less uh, a vehicle but it should have a weighted average and this is how it is calculated the weighted factor that if it is a two-person carpool then you have to multiply it by half if it is a three-person carpool it will be multiplied by two-thirds the general formula is if it is shared by n number of persons it has to be divided by n minus one by n so this is how you have to take out the weighted factor and put it above in the alternative transportation trips that you have calculated for the carpool now once you have incorporated the carpool trips inside the alternative transportation total trips you will have a raw alternative transportation trips by the occupants by uh, dividing alternative transportation trips by total trips which in case would have been uh, with the conventional vehicles uh, one incoming and one outgoing uh, in one conventional vehicle minus the absences so total trips they would have made uh, minus the absence is in the denominator and the alternative transportation trips collective will be in the numerator so i think these three formulas are uh, pretty simple let's go to the next slide so you have got something called survey response rate this is uh, needed because under ideal conditions you uh, gave 100 forms or 100 surveys distributed and you've got 100 answers no need to do anything but this usually does not happen so you should have a response rate if you uh, which is simple how many you distributed how many you got filled so number of uh, answered surveys divided by the number of recipients will give you a response rate in case in case you got 80 answers from 100 it will be 80 percent and then you've got an extrapolation factor this is required because for the non-respondents you have to apply some value for for them in case you have got 60 to 100 percent of uh, the answers the response rate is 60 to 100 percent and the extrapolation factor is going to be one if it is 50 to 59 you've got it 0.8 we will consider that the remaining are complying by 80 percent of what you have already received as an answer and the rest of the table 40 to 49 uh, will be uh, having extrapolation factor of 0.6 30 to 39 will have 0.4 and less than 30 you cannot extrapolate you will consider that remaining 70 are not using any alternative transportation so the final formula where you have to put all these values is first you, uh, to calculate total alternative transportation trips so first the alternative commuting trips that you have calculated in the first formula then the non-responders the people 
who did not respond to your surveys and you have to give them a certain value based on your response rate. So non-responders into days by week, if they're coming five days a week or six days a week, times two commutes per day, which is the standard coming and uh, outgoing. Then you have to multiply non-responders by the extrapolation factor, uh, which in case, uh, if you consider 50 to 59, it would be 0.8 and uh, rest goes as per the table times the raw alternative transportation rate, which we calculated in the third formula in the past slide. So once you have multiplied all, you have the answering people or the people who uh, responded to the survey plus the people who did not respond and they are being extrapolated based on these formula will uh, going to give you the total alternative transportation trip. So there are six formulas. I think uh, if you go one by one, they're not that difficult. So after having the total alternative transportation trips, which include the people who answered the survey, the people who did not answer the survey, and uh, multiplying with the extrapolation factor and raw alternative transportation. So you came up with this total alternative transportation trips. Now in order to get the rate, it's simply divided by total occupants now times the days of the week times the two trips per day standard. Remember, this is for occupants, for visitors, we have a different formula. So this is the final equation that uh, will give you the percentage or the rate for regular occupants using alternative transportation. And the number of points will be based on this uh, distribution chart. So we saw that it gives you three to 15 points. So starting with 10%, if 10% alternative transportation rate is being uh, calculated based on the above formula, you will get 10, uh, sorry, uh, three points and 15, 20, respectively four or five up till say, if, if there is 70% uh, of alternative transportation rate, you're going to earn maximum 15 points. So these are the seven formulas in order to come back to this alternative transportation rate chart and then you can compare how many points your project can earn so for 80 trips by visitors it's going to be much easier because you do not have uh, the days per week or somebody who is absent it's just like visitors who are coming and you have to see if they are using any alternative mode of transportation so you will just add the number of trips uh, which count as alternative trips and then alternative transportation trips calculated divided by total trips of these visitors. Now visitors would not be calculated alone. Definitely they are uh, calculated or their alternative trips are calculated based on the fact that the peak and average daily is more than occupants. So the combined equation would be percentage of regular occupants into raw alternative transportation rate of regular occupants or <clears throat> the one we calculated before plus the visitors percentage of visitors that <coughs> excuse me uh, that visited or that answered times the raw alternative transportation rate for visitors so this is going to give the overall uh, occupants plus visitors now once doing all these calculations uh, the documentation for uh, this credit or this option option number two is uh, the documentation of option number one, which is the transportation survey, plus demonstrate that what is the percentage reduction in conventional commuting trips and the corresponding points by using the previous table, which we have seen that 10% goes to uh, three number of points and so on and so forth until 70, that is going to give you 15 points. Now, this was option number two. The option number three is the transportation resources. Uh, which is that the first thing you have to meet the requirements uh, of option number one to make a transportation survey and implement comprehensive alternative transport program by one of the following. Remember, the maximum number of points is 15 and for that you have to calculate the alternative transportation rate or else one point was for the survey and this option number three is going to give you maximum two points. So what are the strategies that can be implemented or what are uh, the program? Uh, one of them is educational strategies. If you have a new hire and you are uh, providing or making an orientation, you can uh, introduce also an alternative 
transport program insight there you could have a monthly newsletter or weekly uh, newsletter showing uh, the alternative transport program introduced or some memos just like the office memos then uh, there could be basic support like you have a system or you have have a program of carpool events uh, so the people coming to the same place can take part in those carpool event ride matching if two people coming from the same place they can ride match and preferen uh, preferential parking for people using carpool or ride matching or if they're uh, using the green vehicles they can have preferential parking uh, for example near to the door and uh, even sometimes you can offer them a discounted parking fees there are direct strategies that are going to reduce the number of uh, people or uh, the number of commutes, which is telecommuting, work from home, compressed work week if you're uh, using less number of days. And another uh, strategy could be bicycle program. Uh, I have heard, uh, I think in some of the companies, they introduce uh, some walking program. You have to, uh, they give you the devices and uh, you can post your progress and sometimes there is a small competition in between the employees as well. So these are some of the strategies that you can implement. But remember that option one and three collective can only give you three points, whereas option number two is where you can earn maximum number of points. So the documentation for option number three, uh, the survey, it, it, it is a must, it, it has to be there. So the doc documentation of the survey and a narrative description of what uh, alternative transport program that you uh, have implemented its educational strategy new hire orientation or some carpool events so whatever you have implemented you have to submit as in documentation of each implement that is being implemented uh, we saw that for option number two uh, the 70 percent was corresponding to 15 points if you are able to show 80 percent reduction from the conventional commuting baseline you will get an exemplary performance so this was the credit uh, having three uh, options and uh, it concludes allocation and transportation and we'll continue further with sustainable sites thank you very much